Howdy. I'm Kelsey. I make, I was going to say comics, but really it's just art. Today I want to bring you on a little journey as I make a shawl, or rather a cardigan. I wanted to make this cardigan for a while since I saw this pattern, but this particular pattern, when I looked more in depth into it, the tricky thing about this is that it looks like a shawl. It is not a shawl. It is a long scarf with pockets, which I suppose could be a look if you wanted to pursue it, but it's not what I want to make. What I want to make is I want to make an actual honest to goodness cardigan with the yarn that this pattern calls for, which is the Karen Bogo donut, this here. I have two full donuts and two half donuts of this color mix in particular. I have three of a different color mix that incorporates blues and browns. I'm not sure that I want to use that one because I already have a purple, blue, and brown sweater in the other room. So if you want to see that, you can check out the craft highlight reel that I did showing off some of the stuff that I've made, including some sweaters that I've knitted. It was one of the sweaters that I knitted, link in the description. What I want to do is I want to make a cardigan with this yarn. Now I'm going to sketch out some ideas for how I want to structure this. I am trying to figure out whether I want to knit this or crochet this because like a good bisexual, I can do both. Very bisexual of me to be able to knit and crochet. We call that stitch craft. Now the tricky bit is figuring out whether I want to knit this shawl or crochet this shawl because I could do either one. I could be freaky and do both for this cardigan project. I'm not sure that I would want to, but it's something. now. Admittedly, I can do more with crochet than I can with knitting. For example, I do not know how to knit buttonholes. I can crochet buttonholes. That is not hard for me to do. I can also crochet pockets. That is not hard for me to do. Knitting, it's a little trickier to do that sort of thing. So I might go crochet, but if I do crochet, do I want to do single crochet, double crochet? What do I want to do with that? because single crochet would take forever, but it would be cozy. The original pattern that, that inspired this entire thing actually calls for single crochet, which is just, God, that's gonna take forever. Um, but the nice thing is, is that this is a pretty large gauge. This is a large gauge for a yarn, so it's not going to take as long. It says on the labeling there, that it's a four, it is a four medium. So you can use eight size knitting needles or you can use an H crochet hook. And I have both of those, I think. I'm gonna double check my knitting needle stash, but I'm pretty sure that I have that. I'm pretty sure that I have that size knitting needle because otherwise, how did I knit that sweater? But I know for sure I have the crochet hook because I have way more crochet hooks <laughs> than I do knitting needles. Um, tells you what kind of projects I prefer to do. But in fairness, I learned how to crochet before I learned how to knit. But I did just come off of a lot of crochet because I crocheted a lot of gifts for my friends for the holidays. So maybe I could do the break and knit. I don't know. I, I'm still figuring it out. I'm going to sketch out some ideas, going to map it out and get back to you.
Okay, to make the planning process a little easier, I whipped out one of my favorite cardigans that I like to wear. This was a piece I inherited from my granny. She wore lots of cardigans in her day. So I just measured out the width from about here to here, because I figured that would be, give me a good estimate. Um, and right around there is where it feels snug. Uh, so I measured the width and then I measured from uh, shoulder to the base here. And then for the sleeve, I measured from uh, this edge to here. Now, when I knit and or crochet this, I'm not going to be attempting this curve. I am not going to be doing that. I'm just going to be doing a solid block. So the sleeves may need to get adjusted. But when it comes to making cardigan or sweater projects, you tend to work back panel first, then your front panels, then the sleeves. So that's how I'm going to be doing this. I've got my measurements and a rough sketch of how I want this to look. I also mapped out the button placements because I have exactly seven orange buttons and that is not an accident if you know me. Um, but it was serendipitous that I had seven orange buttons in this button pack that I got from the craft store. So I will be incorporating that, incorporating that into this cardigan project. Now I just got to figure out whether I want to knit this or crochet this. I'm leaning towards crochet, honestly, um, because I already have three knit sweaters and a knitted sweater vest, but I don't have a crochet anything as far as tops go. So I might just crochet this cardigan. I'm kind of leaning towards that way anyway. So all this talk about figuring out whether I want to knit or crochet, I was like, hey, I have a leftover like quarter from one of these donuts from the knitting project that I did. How about I just take some of it and I crochet a swatch and see how that feels and looks once the swatch is done. This swatch admittedly is not like a little knitted swatch. I actually did two rows of single crochet and then one row of double crochet. Uh, whenever you do a swatch, you got you should ideally do just one type of stitch, but I felt like doing a little bit of an economy and not using a bunch of yarn for two different swatches. So I just combined them both into one. Now, I do like how the uh, double crochet feels, but I don't want gaps between the stitches. Uh, single crochet is a little denser, so I do appreciate the density of the single crochet. It's more akin to uh, knitting when you do single crochet. I wanted to try double crochet though, because in my experience, double crochet just goes faster. Um, which might come in handy for a big project like a cardigan. But I'm going to take it, gander at this, and I'm also going to knit a swatch and see how that feels. Okay, so I now have a little knitted swatch. So I have the knitted here and the crocheted here. In the crochet, I have the two rows of single crochet and one row of double. Now, something to note, I'm using American terminology here. British terminology would actually call these uh, double crochet and treble crochet, which I think is just a little kooky, but I get it. It's, I think it concerns the number of loops that you put on the crochet hook is why they use that terms, those terms. 
Um, but after having made this swatch here and this swatch here, oh, there's a little part of me that kind of wants to do a strange little hybrid of both. I do like the smoothness of particularly the uh, pearl stitching for knitting. The problem is, is that knitting takes longer. And there's a little part of me that just wants to make this and make it fast. And for me, crochet is faster. Now, do I want to do, if I do crochet, do I want to do single or double? Because double would be even faster than single, but single is denser and has less of a possibility of holes, which if I'm going to be crocheting something solid that would enable pockets, I'd probably want to go with the single crochet. Uh, I don't know. I'll sleep on it. It's late and I need to, and I need to go to bed so I can go to the dentist in the morning. I'll think about it when I'm at the dentist's office probably. Okay. Uh, status update with the cardigan project. So after discussing this with my roommate, who also is a good bisexual and knits and crochets, and talking with her about the perks and drawbacks of both, I have decided to crochet this cardigan because I can do a lot more with crochet than I can with knitting. Like make buttonholes. I want to make buttonholes with this particular cardigan because I have exactly seven large orange buttons that I want to add onto this cardigan. Very excited to do that, but it is way easier to, to add buttonholes when you're crocheting than when you're knitting, in my experience. Probably some expert knitter out there is like, well, I find it easier to do it in knitting. You're a wizard, Janice! <laughs> Uh, here is what we have of the back panel so far. I actually shrank this down. It was originally like 100 chain stitches. This is 90 chain stitches, uh, 90 to 91. Uh, it was originally 100, but then I measured it across my torso and I went, 100 is too wide. So I frogged it a bit and did 90 instead. And we are at about this width. For a back panel for a cardigan, this might look a little wide, but you know, for demonstration purposes, if we follow the natural curvature of my booty, it's still like, I'd say this is a pretty decent width for a, for a cardigan, especially since we're going to be lowering it. I don't, I mean, I have measurements for how long the template cardigan that inspired this is because the original cardigan is like 30 inches tall. I might make this longer. I have the yarn to pull it off because I have two of these and I have been working off of the quarter donut. This is what I have left of it after making this. And I still have this remnants of a donut from another project. This is the same gauge, so I don't have to worry about that. Once I run out of yarn for this like quarter donut, I will work off of this because this is a free baby and ready to not be loose. So we'll work with this next. <laughs> uh, but I have like at least two of these. I also have three of another color swatch that has blue in it and two other ones. My craft store had these on clearance. I bought a bunch <laughs> when they went on clearance. That's why I have so many. Uh, I was also a Michael's employee once upon a time and I used my employee discount. <laughs> I no longer work for the company. I am self-employed. So any support that you can give is hugely appreciated. I'm gonna leave links for my Kofi shop and etc. down in the description below. All right, honestly, the next thing to do at this point is to just keep going. We'll see what the next status report brings. <laughs> it might be a while though, so don't hold your breath. Something I completely forgot to mention with the uh, status update for the uh, crochet cardigan project, which is 
Uh, now is as good a time as any to catch up on audiobook stuff for me, uh, because like I could listen to video essays that I've heard like 17 times already, or I could listen to audiobooks and podcasts while I work on this. So as far as podcasts go, I actually recommend Tarot for the Wild Soul if you are into tarot stuff. I really like how inclusive this particular reader is. Like she advocates for trauma-informed consent and queer inclusivity in tarot readings, which is great because uh, for people who may not know, tarot, the traditional readings, are pretty honkin' heterosexual. And that's not my experience in my life. <laughs> so I'm really appreciative of sources like tarot for the wild soul. In that same vein, book recommendation, Queering the Tarot by Cassandra Snow. Very much in the same vein. As far as podcasts go, I may catch up on another, I mean, I haven't started not another D&D &D podcast yet, but I really want to, knowing that Emily Axford is a part of it. Um, I really like her as a player. She actually makes min-maxing fun, which is shocking. Maybe catch up on some other tabletop RPG podcasts. Like there's one Vampire the Masquerade uh, podcast that my co-hosts really like to talk about. By the way, I co-host a podcast. I don't know if you know this. Um, it's called The Fourth Leg. We share GM tips to help give GMs a strong leg to stand on. That is not my tagline. Hunter came up with that. Blame Hunter for that. Anyway, <laughs> yeah, give the podcast a listen if you are new to being a game master and you need some tips and tricks on how to be a good game master. We also do uh, actual play content between seasons. So I highly recommend that you give that a listen, especially if you want to hear me play a queer vampire by the name of Archie. I love Archie so much, darling. <laughs> One of these days I'll put together a voiceover reel. We'll see. I actually did some voiceover work for uh, Ben Wright Human, AKA BWH Comics here on YouTube. So if you haven't checked out his YouTube short, A Mother's Love, which is a comics animation that he did, I did some voice work for that. So check that out link in the description below. Podcasts, other podcasts that I want to catch up on. I still need to catch up on the Unexpectables. I'm still on season one. Don't judge me. And also, as far as audiobooks, I'm really enjoying All Systems Read by Martha Wells. Not just because it's short. Bless, I love me a short audiobook. Anything that's like four hours or less is a great audiobook in my, in my book. That I said that. I like short audiobooks. So giving that a listen uh, and having a great time with it. It turned into a murder mystery and I was not expecting that. Also, the main character is literally named Murderbot. I love Murderbot. He's my he's now one of my new favorite robots in all of fiction. <laughs> I downloaded some other audiobooks through Hoopla. Highly recommend Hoopla because you can download audiobooks for free through your public library. Highly recommend that you give Hoopla a try. So I'm listening to all systems read thanks to Hoopla. My other borrows include The Empress of Salt and Fortune by this author um, and A Prayer for the Crown Shy by Becky Chambers. I read or I listened to the audiobook version of A Psalm for the Wild Built, which is the first book in that series. Mwah! Immaculate. I love the Hope Punk vibes. It's so good. If you want to hear the story of a genderqueer monk and a genderqueer robot going on a road trip together, it's great vibes. It's great. The other audiobook I borrowed is Our Wives Under the Sea by Julia Armfield. The pitch has this kind of Annihilation by Jeff Vandermeer original pitch to it, which is the idea that a woman's loved one goes on an expedition, disappears, and comes back a changed person. Only in Annihilation, it takes a turn for the weird. In Our Wives Under the Sea, it sounds like it takes a turn for the mermaid, if, I'm re if I understand the synopsis right. 
Either way, I'm looking forward to reading this. <laughs> So those are my audiobook borrows. Maybe the next crochet update, I will let you know how the audiobooks go and whether I like them or not. Okay, before I give a update on the crochet cardigan, I want to take a second to talk about this anime that I'm watching right now a little bit. Uh, I found the Mask of Zigai English dub posted on YouTube. Bless the person who posted that on there. Probably this was recommended because I was just watching the Anime Abandoned review of Mask of Zigai because I like what having Anime Abandoned episodes play in the background while I do studio stuff. But this was actually one of those OVAs that while Sage was not an overly big fan of it, I was like, I'm willing to give this a shot because I like crack fix and the weird. So I'm willing to give this a chance, especially knowing that um, Yu-Gi-Oh's voice actor is one of the voiced characters in this dub. Now, <laughs> the thing is, I am willing to give even bad anime a shot because here's the thing. Fun fact about me, when I was growing up, my family ran a small business. It was a sporting goods place, but it also doubled as the video rental place because this was the era when everybody and their brother wanted to run a video rental store uh, in a mob and pop middle of nowhere place. Sorry, that was my wrist. Uh, to try to be their basically countryside blockbuster. And that was what my family also did. And we did this by stalking the weird animated movies. <laughs> because there, while there was another family video rental store, they primarily catered to the horror buffs. And I remember seeing the, um, <laughs> the video cover for The Silence of the Lambs and being absolutely weirded out by it at like six years old. <laughs> so what we stocked at our store was all of the animated stuff. Not just Disney or Fox, but we also stocked some of the stranger stuff. Like we had the little engine that could, if anybody remembers that one, that traumatized me as a kid. <laughs> uh, we also had this legendarily bad anime dub called The Secret of the Seal. And if you know this, you are my people. And if you are if you are not familiar with this, stay with me and you will become my people. So The Secret of the Seal is this anime that was made entirely about a young boy who discovers a cave where a family of seals live. And it's kind of a environmental message because it's a dub from like the 90s. Now the thing about it being localized into English is that the dubbing job was bad. <laughs> like legendarily bad. I'm talking like evil zone video game levels of bad. And if you know that video game, you are my people and I love you. If you do not know that game, uh, the dubbing job for evil zone, I imagine they also did the dub for the secret of the seal. <laughs> like I don't imagine that English was their first language. They don't even make any attempt to time the lip flaps. And it's like, there will be lines of dialogue that will just like have the strangest timings. And if I can survive the awful dub of The Secret of the Seal and still enjoy it as a kid, I feel like I can handle any dub, any anime dub, realistically. That's why I'm willing to give this Mask of Z guy a chance. I don't imagine that's going to be a bad dub, but knowing the plot of the story going into it, it's going to be a weird time and it's going to probably be a more Alice in Wonderland version of Read or Die is what the is what I gleaned from it from the Anime Abandon review, but I do want to give this a shot. It was because of Anime Abandon that I discovered Angel's Egg, which is an anime I absolutely adore now. Maybe by the end of this, I will have a high opinion. We will see. I'm not going to go in with any assumptions. All I do know is I'm going to go in with my uh, crochet. Here's the status update part. We are about, oh gosh, I don't know if I can adequately like portray this, but we are at least nine and a half inches at this point. Nine and a half inches tall. We are 
I didn't even measure how wide this is, but it's a comfortable cardigan width, but we're about nine and a half inches tall. Now we did use up the quarter donut. We are now about, um, I want to say halfway through this next donut. So bit of a yarn hog, this crochet pattern. Uh, we will see how long this lasts. Wish me luck. Y'all. Y'all. Leonardo da Vinci leads werewolves filled with sand and two cyborgs fighting against the Japanese Nikola Tesla who is piloting a sentient airship I just and that's that's not even getting into the bad guy this this movie <laughs> this OVA if you have not seen Mask of Z Guy watch Mask of Z Guy <laughs> it's a trip worth the hour and 30 minutes of watching it's so stupid I love it it's now my new favorite OVA. <laughs> oh my god. Oh! <laughs> so, okay. Um, other than that, unfortunately, I did not get a ton of crocheting done because about part way through, I decided to just draw instead. But I'll be showing that off in a different video. Just wanted to let you know how Mask of Z Guy went. It's fuck wild. Y'all need to watch it. It's. I think. It's a great, fun, bad time. Kind of in the same vein as, like, the Puma Man. So, you know. <laughs> if that tickles your fancy, check it out. It's worth a watch, at least once. <laughs> All right, back to it. Okay, been a couple of days since the last status update. Been making a lot of progress. Working on this in my downtime while uh, YouTube and stuff plays in the background. And I realized something while I was uh, making my progress. So, there we go. Finger through the loop. This is what I have so far of the back, but I realized something working on this. I will demonstrate for you the thing that I realized. Ugh, the lighting does not do any favors for any of this, but the thing that I realized is that if I turn it sideways, it is actually almost the perfect length for the cardigan. Uh, as far as width, it would be kind of snug, um, but I mean, it's yarn. Yarn can stretch, but it's like, I actually measured it out. It's about 26 inches from shoulder to where I would want it to sit. It actually sits past, uh, basically past my shirt line down to about here on my thigh, which is about where a lot of my other cardigans sit at. So now the dilemma is, do I want to turn this sideways or do I want to work with the original intent of keeping it striped like this? Basically, do I want the stripes uh, horizontal or vertical? Because if I do vertical, and I add extra inches top or bottom, I'm gonna have to do it in a patch. But if I keep it striped like this, I would have to add several extra inches. I don't know, I'm still thinking it over. I don't think I'm gonna make this decision tonight uh, because I'm actually gonna be traveling tomorrow because as I'm recording this, it's the holiday season, so I'm gonna be flying out of town to visit family uh, tomorrow and I won't be back until like, Saturday night, <laughs> so I got some time to think about it. Um, not too worried about it at the moment. And if I don't have a decision by Saturday night, I'll just pause working on the cardigan and work on something else. We're just gonna put a pin in it till I get back. Hello, I am back from my vacation and I've had some time to add a couple more inches since then, because I figured I'd just add 
a couple more inches. Um, don't mind the background audio. The Mystery Science Theater 3000 live stream is playing. We're just going to ignore it for a second. But here's the status update. So this is what I have crocheted so far for the back panel. And I'm actually going to wrap this up here because I laid this out flat over it as my template because this is my template. But when I laid the back out, it was actually pretty well evensies. The only thing is I would need to add a border along the top or the bottom. More than likely the top because here's what I'm thinking of doing. Because back panel, then I'm going to do the two fronts, the sleeves, and I want to add a border along the bottom of the cardigan as well as a border along the edges of the two front panels so that I have some place to put the buttons and then making uh, front pockets. That's what I want to do. And with that, I'm going to cast this off and we will start our two front panels. I'll do some measurements. I'll double check the measurements to see how big the front panels ought to be. And then we'll go from there. Shoulders a little tender. I got my vaccinations earlier today. Wanted to make a video with an update on the cardigan stitch, 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 because I've been making a lot of progress since the last check in. The back panel, two front panels, and one sleeve are done. But here's the tricky bit. I kind of ran out of yarn for the second sleeve. I say kind of because. I have enough yarn to make the pockets in the same color swatches, but that's about it. So I'm saving those for the pockets. I was at a little hangout over Discord earlier with a bunch of other cartoonists uh, as just a work get together hangout space while they worked on their comics projects. And I was like, I'm just going to be working on this a crochet cardigan thing <laughs> so but during the hangout I asked them what color donut yarn to work with next and by a popular vote we opted for this to be our sleeve as well as our border because uh, the yarn that's enough for me for the pockets probably not enough to start the border so this will be our second sleeve and our border yarn and with this combined with these color swatches I have already crocheted, it'll make a nice kind of uh, sea foam kind of color vibe to it, which will, I think, pair really nicely. And with our orange buttons, the orange buttons will be a nice contrast to help with, you know, making it pop. So that's where we're at, I am not unfolding these. I just folded them up earlier. They're nice and folded and tidy. And I don't want to unfold these because they're otherwise going to be a pain in the butt to fold back up and put back in the basket. So I'm not going to try that. As I work on this second sleeve, I'll show you some uh, bits of how I made the sleeve because I did some stitch reduction to make the sleeve. I already started stitching the panels in the sleeves together. So before I go any further on this, I'm gonna go ahead and break down how I worked on the sleeve. I actually wrote the pattern as I was making it. So what I did was I started about halfway down. I reduced four sets of stitches and then worked my way up until I got to this cuff part here and then I started working it down uh, in sequence where I would like single crochet I think it started at six stitches and then five then four then three um, but when you're crocheting you don't want to do like reduce stitches then the next row reduce stitches you don't want to do that when you crochet you want to reduce the stitches on one row next row just crochet straight across then the next row after that you reduce stitches again next row crochet crochet straight across again 
etc etc and then once I got to a point where I was reducing stitches on like the third stitch or so I crocheted as normal and got it to this tube I already did test fits it's very cozy very snug and I like how it fits now you might be wondering why does this look a little bubbly that's because I turned the sleeves inside out so that I could stitch everything together while it was inside out this will be turned right side out once everything is sewn up now i've already sewed the sleeve along this edge here and i actually did this differently from how i usually do my knits because usually when you knit you actually do not work the sleeve in a tube you work it like a panel straight across and you just kind of at least that was the pattern that i that i found when i started knitting uh sweaters the sweater pattern that i found you don't knit it in a tube you just knit it in a panel and then you sew whoop, along the edges and that is how you form the sides in a knitted sweater i did not do that this time around we will see how it fits once everything is done but i did count the stitches very carefully when sewing it up i think it'll fit just fine so that is the progress on this so far next update we'll see how it goes so y'all It's almost done. The only thing left that I gotta do is to add a little bit of a border along here so that I can put some buttons and buttonholes in place. And it obviously needs pockets, but it's, oh, it's so heckin' cozy right now. It's almost there. It's almost there. We just gotta add some final touches. Hopefully these will be quick. This is actually really nice and validating because this, the last couple of days have been exceptionally frustrating on like a technical level with work so it has been really really nice to have a personal craft project go right this is really nice so far fingers crossed hopefully it keeps going well but so far so good thank goodness Effort. Look at this. It even has a little like lapel color thingy ma do. I love it. It has got a little border and, it, and it's got little buttons. And I don't I don't care that the, the placement of the buttons is a little bit close towards the bottom. I don't care. I love them. I love them all and I love the pockets. Yes. And 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 for so many minutes, but oh, I love this so much. Just wanna make happy gurbling noises. <sighs> now that the happy gurbling noises are done and out of the way, I'm gonna uh, do some final thoughts. First, <laughs> I'm pretty sure this will lay down after I give it a good wash. Um, same with, um, don't know if it'll show here, but like the, um, the bottom portion kind of curls. I'm pretty sure that's also going to flatten out in the wash, but still, I just, mm, 
I love how this turned out. Um, there, now there are a couple things. Um, I realized after I stitched the whole body together that I probably could have done an invisible or mattress stitch to put the parts together because that's what I usually do with my sweaters and I did not do that with this. In fairness, I forgot. <laughs> but also not entirely sure how to do a mattress stitch with crochet items probably figure out a way to do it. Mattress stitch is not hard once you get the hang of it. It's just a lot to remember. Smile, you're on candid camera. Is there a bug? I think there's a bug. I don't know, we'll let Mooney do his thing. <sighs> Would I make another cardigan like this? I don't know, it depends on how much yarn that I get. I did kind of run out of uh, the, the blue, uh, the blue patterned yarn after a point, so I would need to get a lot more yarn to do a cardigan project like this ever again. I'm unbuttoning this. This is really, really hot <laughs> right now. Oh, okay, because I'm already wearing a cozy pajama shirt underneath. Anyways, I kind of, I kind of want to take a, a bit of a crochet break, but at the same time, the next craft project that I want to do after this is uh, another crochet project, but it's also kind of a lazy crochet project for me because it's a, a giant granny square. I could do that or I could jump into the knitting project, which is kind of the same thing because they're both sweater vests. It's just one is made with crochet, the other with knit. I'd have to think about how I want to do the knit one because I have a couple of things floating around in my head for how to approach that one, but the granny square crochet sweater vest would be really easy to knock out for me. Other than that, probably gonna do another uh, art video. Let me know what you would like to see with regards to that. Comment section is down below. Also, let me know if you would like to get the pattern for this. I just kind of like improvised as I went, but I took a lot of notes. I took a lot of notes in my little notebook here. Um, it's like, it's like three pages worth of notes. I'll pick those up. But it's like three pages worth of notes that I could uh, make into a pattern of some sort if you wanted me to do that. If you want me to make a pattern for this so that you could make your very own at home, let me know in the comments. I don't generally make crochet patterns though, so I don't know how legible it's going to be. Other than that, I'm going to take a break because I think I've earned it. If you liked following along with this project, be sure to give this a like. Subscribe to see the next creative project that I do. It could be crochet, it could be knit, it could be art, uh, but I also do live streams and YouTube shorts, so you can be sure to subscribe to get all of that stuff and hit the notifications for letting you know when I go live on my live streams. Would love if you could uh, join us there. We usually just hang out while I draw stuff. That's all I've got for now. Thank you so much for watching. You are awesome. Gonna drink some water. <laughs>